Okay, this video is going to be a how-to um, to create parts within an assembly for the Automoblox car. So, um, first thing we want to do is make sure that we are in an Automoblox car project folder, and I have my Automoblox car project folder file here. So we want to create a new assembly. So I could go to File and go to New and start a new assembly this way. There's also this little um, arrow down here that I can come down and just start a new assembly. You have to make sure that your default settings are the way that you want them. And this is a quick way to go in and make sure that I'm, I can just pick any one of these um, new assembly, new drawing, new part, or new presentation. I kind of like to use that. So I'm going to go to Assembly. And once assembly loads, we're going to go ahead and place the T9 um, passenger section. So it's going to be this object right here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to open. And I'm going to left click to place and I'm going to right click and say OK. And you're going to notice that we now have for ourselves this uh, passenger section file. <clears throat> now, I might not necessarily like the way that they have this oriented. Um, they're calling this the right side view, and they're calling this the bottom. So what I'm going to do is try to find what I'm going to call the front view. So I'm going to call this right here the front view. I'm going to right-click on the word right, go down to set current view as, and go to front. I'm going to click on this corner right here, and I like this isometric view as my home view. I want to right-click, set current view as home, and go to fit to view. Now, every time I click on the house, it will fit it to view within my view area. So what we could do is we could go in and we could place and constrain uh, these little kind of connector pieces in here. So you'll notice that in the T9 object, um, there's these sockets that we can put in. And we could come out and you know go to open, and I could come in here and, and start constraining these into place. So that's totally true. You know, I could come in and kind of start constraining these and popping them around and moving them up against the walls and stuff. I'm not going to do that, though. One of the things I do with my students is we kind of start discussing about how we can go about making parts within this object. So we're actually going to make connector pieces that just go right into the wood of this thing. So that's one of the things we're going to start out learning to do. So I'm going to go to Create at the top, and I'm going to go ahead and just call this uh, Connect connector piece one. And when you go to create, you're saying, I want to create a part within an assembly. So I'm going to go to connector piece one, and I'm going to say, OK. And it's going to ask us, what surface are you going to start sketching on? Or what do you want to put a plane on? And I'm going to click on this surface right here. And everything's going to turn to a watermark. And you're going to notice we're right back into our 3D model up here. I'm going to click on my pencil. And it's going to kind of rotate this around. And I want to kind of go back to my home view, and I want to click on this plane. Now you're going to notice you got these three planes right here, just like you normally do when you start a sketch. But the XY plane is on that surface that we clicked back here on the back. I could also just click on the surface we chose before. That makes it easier. I want to go ahead and click on that. And it's going to rotate this object for us. Now, what we want to use is we want to go to Project Geometry. So I'm going to click on Project Geometry, and I want to project that surface that we just clicked on. you notice when I come in here, that will automatically highlight in red, and I'm going to click. So I'm going to right-click from that, and I'm going to say OK. And we can go to Finish Sketch, and what we've done is we've basically stolen this geometry without sketching anything. I want to go to Extrude, and you're going to notice it automatically fills. This is automatically filling up this space. So there's more than one way to go about doing this. Um, we could go to the word 2 right here and just click on this surface. So we say, no, I want to fill this thing up like a cavity. We could just fill that up and say OK. And you're going to notice that this is all filled up now. If I went to return, you'd notice that we have totally filled in this area. Now, I don't necessarily want to do that. There's some other things I'd like for us to do with this object. So what we're going to do uh, from here, you know, I tell you, we'll, make a, we'll make a quick cut into this thing. I tell you what, instead of going back and editing this, We'll go back and we'll make we'll do some offsetting from here. So you notice this this uh, work plane is is turned on right here. You see the you see the orange uh, square over here. We're going to right click on that and go down to visibility. And we're going to get rid of that. Now we are still within our assembly, and you're going to notice you see this blue um, arrow, and you're going to see this red arrow turn. That means that this is adaptive. That means if I went in and changed anything about this block, that my connector piece was going to automatically adjust with it. Now we are still in an assembly. I want to only work on our connector piece. I could double click on it in the browser bar and edit it and then go to return, or I can just double click on the part within the assembly. 
what I want to do is click on our pencil and I want to click on just this surface right here and we're going to click on project geometry and we want just the outside edge of this object and you're going to notice that turn yellow we're going to come up and grab the offset command we're going to go to offset we're going to drag this in just a little bit and we want to make sure we give ourselves a little bit of a gap and I'm going to choose a really small gap of 0 0.02 and I want to hit enter and we're going to go to finish sketch what I want to do is I want to go to extrude and I want just the inside of it and we're going to go to cut we're going to cut that object back and if I go to a side view, what's kind of nice is I can choose kind of a similar depth. I can kind of come back this way. I can slowly start dragging this, and I can see where it's going to cut. This looks just kind of like hidden lines in a multi-view drawing. I can kind of drag this in, and we can see that it's 0 0.50. I'm going to go 0.5, I don't know, 0.55. One of the things I like about doing this with my students is the fact that we are doing original design. So see, there's still a little bit of sliver of material back here. And I'm going to go ahead, after we've cut that, and I'm going to say, Okay, and now when I come back around to the front, you can see that we've created that little surface right now. We've created it, it's nice. So, what I want to do is let's turn this into dark green. It'll make it easier for us to see. So we're going to go up to the word default up here. Remember, default's just a color. It's not a physical property, it's a visual property. We're going to go to dark green. And automatically it's changed it to dark green. Now, I'd like to put a rectangle in the middle of this and bring it out and we're going to make a scepter connector piece. We call this connector piece. We can always go back and change the name of it. So let's go to our pencil and I want to choose the back of this object. So we're going to come right back here and click on the back back here. Go ahead and click. And you're going to notice we got ourselves the origin right here. Now I can go to rectangle and I want to go to a two-point center rectangle. And two-point center means I'm going to click on the center and as I drag out I get myself a nice little rectangle right here, don't I? I can go up here to the, to the isometric view and drag out this way. I kind of like the front view for this though. You can do whatever you wish. And you're going to notice that I get this coming out and I'm going to go, let's say 1.9 and I'm going to hit tab. And I'm going to go, uh, let's say 0.35. Let's see what that looks like and hit enter. That looks fine. We're kind of creating our own thing here. And I'm going to go to OK and let's go to finish sketch. And I'll go extrude, and we're going to extrude that thing out, and it came out 0.55. Now, again, we can come over here and decide how far out do we really want that, because it's tough sometimes to get a view when you're actually looking right at the front, when you're looking flat at the object. So I'm going to look right here, and you're going to see that come out. Let's go to the front view and take a look over here on the side. That'll make it easier. Let's keep it right about this, 0.425 out, and we're going to say OK, and we're going to go to Return. And we now have something very similar to what we could have placed earlier when we come down here and we go to uh, block socket. You see how this looks very similar. I'll go ahead and open this up. It's not exactly the same. I'm missing that ridge right there and that's fine. But I try to start getting into some original design with my students. We've originally designed this from existing geometry. So notice once again, we have these adaptive constraints in here. These are adaptive. So if I were to go into the passenger section, double click on this, and I'm going to try to find this right here. This, There's that extrusion, and there's the original sketch. If I go to edit sketch right here, and I say, you know what, this isn't 2.5, this is actually 2.7, and I change that, and I go to finish sketch, I'm going to come back to return, and you're going to notice that my object has already adapted to that change. You don't see any gap over here on the side. This connector piece has already modified with the passenger section. So as long as we have this adaptability figure right here, it's automatically going to change no matter what. Now I'm going to hit undo, and we're going to see it go back to its normal shape here. And now we're back to normal. Let's just say, for the sake of discussion, as we end out this part of the video, we're going to say, you know what? I don't really want this to be adaptive. I just wanted to kind of steal the geometry from this because I'm going to make a part for something else. We can right-click on the connector piece and take away its adaptability. And then it'll no longer go along with this wood piece. I want to keep everything adaptive because if I go back and change something, I want all the parts to automatically adjust. So we talked about making this a connector piece. Let's let's change the name of this because this is technically not a connector piece. I want to tap once and then tap again over here, and we're going to call this socket one. I only tapped once and then tapped again. It's not a double click. It's a tap, tap, and then you can go in and change the name. So remember, Inventor is very click sensitive. So. We have our T9 passenger section, and we have ourselves the socket 1. What we're going to do in the next video 
is we're going to go in and create the actual connector piece that is going to go along with this part. So this has been a video on how to create your first um, part within an assembly of an automobile box car.